welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here today to do my best books of 2020. Oh hi, thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. If you haven't watched my worst books of 2020, it's the video before this one, but I'll link it up above. This goes over the 10 books I thought just weren't my favorites in 2020. So how about we just get right into it with my book on the number 10 spot, and that is The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. The Right Swipe follows an app developer named Rhiannon as she tries to navigate the world of creating this romance app while not quite trusting the dating world and what comes out of it itself. In this book, she is also in competition with another romance dating app where she finds out that the app's front man is a man she used to have a relationship with, a former pro footballer named Samson Lima. There are a couple of things in this book that I think really made it amazing for me. There are brilliant main characters that are both smart, brave, and sexy. There was an amazing plot that didn't necessarily feel like it was forcing these two characters together. It felt really natural to me. I wasn't rolling my eyes while I was reading it. And this book had the most consensual sex that I have ever read in a book. And that's something that I really appreciated. I've been trying to get into romance, as you can see, in 2020. And consensual sexy times is not quite something I see very often. So this was something that really set this romance book above the others I read this year. I literally purchased this book in a Walmart in Wildwood, New Jersey two years ago. <laughs> simply because I recognized the cover and little did I know I was gonna absolutely fall in love with this book. From my previous experience with romance books, I really didn't know what I was gonna get into when I read it, but this surprised me from the beginning to the end. I think what really set the tone for my expectations for romance novels is that this book had an engaging plot as well as an interesting romance. I really related to Rhiannon as a main character. She was eerily similar to me. I also found that the love interest, Samson, had had a very interesting backstory that I kind of didn't really expect. His backstory alone was engaging in and of itself. There is a moment of miscommunication in the novel that I usually don't like, but I think because it worked to showing Rhiannon growing as a main character, I didn't mind it that much in this book. Immediately upon finishing this novel, I went to purchase another one of Alicia Rye's romances just because this was one of the most fun books I read in 2020. Coming in at the number nine spot, we have Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This book follows two main characters, one named Penny and one named Sam. Penny had a kind of nonchalant experience in high school. She has a boyfriend, she had good grades, she's going to college, but it is when she starts heading to college in Austin, Texas for a writing career that Penny realizes everything she left behind maybe just wasn't it for her. Sam is the love interest, other main character in the book. He is a struggling young adult who sleeps at the cafe that he works at. He knows that this is just one chapter in his life so he can move forward to being a world famous director, but it is when Sam meets Penny that this story kind of goes from there. So once again, a book I really didn't expect to love and I ended up becoming obsessed with it. I think a lot of people didn't enjoy this book because Penny is a really annoying main character and she reminds me a lot of myself so take from that what you will. She is a writer, she never lets people in, she's very closed off and she only really shows her emotions through writing and that made me cry. Sam as a main character is a baker and he has sleeve tattoos so Every time I put this book down, I just wanted to pick it back up and continue reading. I flew through this. There is an element of text speech or texting in this novel, and usually that makes me cringe, but I feel like Mary H.K. Choi really knew how to write and include texting. It didn't make me cringe at all. It felt really, really real. I loved the growth of these two flawed individuals. It made sense to the plot. It made sense to how they would behave, and this was just like really so good. I just feel giddy thinking about this book. Right now I am showing too much emotion so I'm just gonna put this down but this is a book that completely surprised me this year and I really adored it and I really want to reread it every time I look at it. Next I'm kind of cheating a bit but it's two books, Before the Devil Breaks You and The King of Crows by Libra Bray. These are the last two books in the Diviner series. The Diviner's books follow a girl named Evie O'Neill who has a power to read objects when she touches them. When 
a kind of scandal breaks out in her hometown, she moves in with her uncle in New York City who owns this museum of like extravagant and fantastical things. At first Evie goes to kind of have this fabulous escapism life and it slowly turns into this ghost story and exploration of the ghosts that live in New York. But Libra Bray also touched upon many things that still affect our world today and were extremely prevalent in the 1920s like racism, the way Americans are on land that is not theirs. There's a lot of discussions surrounding that. Bray does so much within these novels like her mind it never ceases to impress me. These books were amazing when I finished them. I was crying. I'll insert a picture of me crying when I finished The King of Crows. I won't go too much into these books because they are the last two books in the series, but I want to say that I think Libra Bray's writing is absolutely amazing. I think this is her best work, so I would highly recommend going into this series. I also would recommend the audiobook. I did read all of them through the audiobook narrated by January Lavoie, and I think she does an excellent job. It's really amazing to me how talented she is. I think if you want to read a series that has excellent main characters, spooky antagonists, and over-encompassing the discusses social issues. I would highly highly recommend this series. If I had to pick a favorite out of the two that I read this year it would probably be Before the Devil Breaks You. I think this is where the series really apt up in terms of plot but I did cry a lot while reading The King of Crows just because I couldn't believe that we were leaving these characters that I've grown to really love and appreciate so much. So yeah, please pick these up. In seventh place we have one of the most impactful reads I read this year. This is Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. This is a difficult book to describe because it does follow a young wizard in New York City named Echo and she is just trying to survive in life and utilizing the powers that have been passed down to her through generations. In this book she kind of travels to two worlds. One is the fantastical, one is the hard and discouraging life that she is growing up in. This book is described as an autobiography that has some magical realism elements within it and this was such a powerful memoir. The book is essentially a metaphor allegory for the trauma that black girls experience. This book was incredibly raw and meaningful to read. I was like crying at certain portions of the book and what this goes to show is how Brown has distanced herself from the events that transpired and uses this magical realm to take the main character away from what they are experiencing. This book covered so much pain and tragedy and I know I will be thinking about this book for a long time. I read this in July and I still think about this. I kind of want to reread it and I might reread it this year just because this was probably the most heartbreaking book I read. Coming in at the number six spot we have a another autobiography. This is All Boys Aren't Blue by George Johnson. This book follows their life essentially from high school to college going over the racism that George M. Johnson experienced, the discrimination he also felt as a member of the LGBTQ plus community. To me this book was one of the most amazing books I've read in my lifetime. It is an exploration of identity, race, and sexuality. It it's such a moving memoir and I did listen to this on audio and they narrate their own audio book and it was so raw and impactful when I was listening to it yet it was incredibly uplifting in a way as well. It's so honest and I think it is a book that was really needed in 2020 but also like forever. I think everybody should read this if you ever have the chance. I don't think there's a single person in this world that wouldn't benefit from reading this. I think George M. Johnson really showcased their talents within the novel. They are an excellent writer, an excellent storyteller, and they really dive deep into the emotions that they were facing during their story. This book really did no wrong. Okay, now we're getting into my top five books. I think some of these can be pretty predictable, so if you did predict them, let me know down below in the comments. But we'll start with the number five. So in fifth place we have Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I just read this recently and I was obsessed with it. I will link the vlog up above where I did go into more details about this book but essentially this is a series that follows a world in the future where humans have kind of conquered death. There are no diseases, no old age, we can kind of just adjust our age however we see fit. We don't need to worry about really 
literally anything except for when it is our time to be gleaned. Scythes are the ones in this world that are chosen to glean the individuals at need be. Most of it is pretty random, but as we learn in this novel, it tends to get very political. This book follows two main characters, primarily Citra and Rowan, and they are apprentice sides, and the book kind of takes off from when they are taken on as these apprentices. I loved this book. I thought it was amazing. I thought the writing was amazing. I'm really impressed by Neil Schusterman. This was the first book I read from him and needless to say it will not be the last. So Schusterman has this really intense idea about morality and mortality and what do we do with this information? How can we judge who lives and who dies and I think he did a fantastic job with that because the writing style in this book was so simple yet engaging and it was quick and snappy and I could not put this book down. I think at one point I read like 300 pages in one sitting. I think that how complex and philosophical this book is is really an attest to Schusterman's capability of making his readers think and I really appreciated our main characters as well. I thought they were both morally gray and flawed yet you can find a reason to root for both of them. So I really 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 love this as you can see watch the vlog that I linked up above if you really want to see my immediate thoughts after finishing this but this is one that I haven't stopped thinking about I need to read the sequel really soon and this was just amazing. Coming in at the number four spot is the only book I don't own but since it is my birthday this month I will be making amends for it. It is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. So Chanel Miller was known to the world as the Emily Doe in the Brock Turner case. Brock Turner had just been sentenced to six months in prison after he was found sexually harassing Chanel Miller on the Stanford campus. Her victim impact statement was posted onto BuzzFeed where it instantly went viral, viewed by 11 million people in just four days. In this book, Chanel Miller is reclaiming her identity in order to tell the story of her trauma. This book, I literally have no words to describe how excellent it was. Not only was this book extremely impactful due to the subject matter, but on top of it all, Miller is one of the most talented writers I read in 2020, but in general as well. Every sentence in this book felt purposeful. There was never a sentence where I was like, this didn't need to be needed. No, no, no. Every word, every sentence was needed and it's really an attest to Miller's talent and capabilities when writing. I had so many reactions uh, listening to this on audio, which she does narrate herself, and it spanned from anger for Chanel Miller given the situation, but then happiness that she was able to utilize this terrible moment in her life and take matters into her own hands. I did request this from the library, like I mentioned, so it is a copy that I don't own, but I wish I did because as I was listening to it, there were so many lines that I wanted to highlight. This was just incredible, no negative things to say, one that I highly recommend, one that I will be buying soon, and I can't wait to see what Chanel Miller does in the future. This was a debut. It was extremely impactful, extremely beautiful. If her next book is even half as crafted as this one, it will still be a five stars. Chanel Miller, hats off to you. This was a great book. Okay, it's down to the top three. So this was really hard for me to do because any other year, these would be like my number ones of the year. So it was extremely hard for me to narrow it down. Coming in at the number three spot, we have The Poppy War by RF Kuang. It follows a young girl named Rin who does everything in her power in order to be accepted at one of the top military schools in her region. And as a shock to everyone, Rin gets accepted into this military academy. At the beginning of the novel, we're really following Rin's experience in the school, but during her her time there, a war breaks out and these students are kind of thrusted into this war without really feeling prepared or mentally, emotionally prepared for the war. First of all, RF Kuang is younger than me and the fact that she created an amazing world while either getting her bachelor's or master's is a feat in of itself. I think that's amazing just on that notion, but this book is one of the best fantasy books I've read in my entire life. This book had brilliant writing, it has amazing characters that are morally great but you kind of root for them. You don't want them to do whatever the fuck they're doing in this book but you understand the actions that they're doing given the situation that they are in. It also had a flawless execution. I don't think there was anything wrong with this book. Much like the book previously that I mentioned, every word and sentence in this book felt extremely purposeful. I want to preface that this book is extremely dark so know that going in there are a lot of triggers for the novel. There's drug use, substance addiction, self-harm, racism, misogyny, war, brutal killing, 
brutal assault, mutilation, there's graphic depictions of how people died. I would really want you to know the triggers before you enter this book. If you can, I think it is worth it. I can't wait to continue in this series. I might even reread this one just to have and experience this series in one go. I think this was phenomenal. Can't wait to see what RF Kuang does next. Coming in at the number two spot, we have Bunny by Mona Awad. Funnily enough, Mona Awad's debut novel was actually in my worst books of the year, but this book really amped it up for me. This was absolutely amazing. This follows a girl named Samantha who is kind of the outsider of her MFA writing class. In her class there are a group of girls who refer to each other as bunny. They appear and seem to move and think as one. Everything that they do is kind of like agreed by each other but everything in this book changes when Samantha receives an invitation to attend one of the bunny's soirees. I don't even know what to say about this book. Like my good review is one sentence and it is that this book made me anxious as fuck and I loved it. There was something about this writing that made me feel so anxious. As I was reading like my heart was pumping and I felt like I was having an anxiety attack. I went into this book completely blind and every page that I was reading or rather like every chapter I was like what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? This book is like a mix of Mean Girls and Frankenstein and I don't even want to talk more about this. This book to me was absolutely perfect. The writing was phenomenal. The plot was really Really engaging. The characters were so strange and captivating that you couldn't help but root for all of them. I think this book is definitely one of the weirdest books I've ever read but Mona Awad's prose makes this book fantastic to read and I would highly recommend it if you want a challenging book that really tests the boundaries of our academic sphere and like strangely has a weird fascination with bunnies. So I would highly recommend this. I think it's the weirdest book I ever read. And then for my number one book of the year, we have The Humans by Matt Haig. I read this in May and it kind of skyrocketed a love and appreciation for this author like I have never felt before. I had no words when I finished this book. I was just sorely impressed by it. The Humans follows this alien species that takes over the body of a professor named Andrew Barton. This professor specifically has kind of discovered aliens or discovered something that could lead humans to discovering aliens and so this specific alien's job was to go onto planet earth and kind of delete all this information so that the humans can't like expand their knowledge but what ends up happening is that this alien kind of adapts into professor andrew's life and meets his family and tries to fix all of these relationships this book was so sad but so funny at the same time i really loved matt haig's writing i was nothing but amazed at how matt haig could really make me feel both those emotions at the same time i have nothing else to say but that I think this is also a perfect book. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It really made me love Matt Haig. I almost have every single one of his books on my TBR and I can't wait to dive into all of them. This book alone just really made me feel like Matt Haig is one of my favorite authors and that's why this is my number one favorite book of the year. So these are all of my favorite books of 2020. Let me know what you have thought about any of these books. Did they make your favorites? Let me know what your number one favorite book of the year was. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell if you want to see more content from me it makes me feel really good and obviously like usual i don't know how to end these things so i guess i will see you next time bye